Hi, I'm Mark Gaylor, Sony Alpha Ambassador, and in this series of short video tutorials, we're going to deep dive into Sony's new menus that we see on cameras such as the A7 IV and the Alpha One. So without much further ado, let's get started. This video tutorial is going to be significantly longer than my other A to Z video tutorials and that's because there's a lot of settings when we're setting up the camera to shoot movie clips. Now the first thing I'm going to do on this Alpha 7.4 is turn that sub dial below the shoot mode dial uh, to that movie icon. Next thing you're going to be doing is deciding what exposure mode you're going to be shooting your movie clips in. Now most people will lean towards the manual exposure mode if they want the uh, maximum degree of control. And then you'll have to choose whether you're going to go into a fixed ISO setting or an auto ISO. Again for maximum control over the final look you'll go into a fixed ISO setting. That could be set something um, like a ISO 100 or 125. Now you'll probably use that 125 ISO if you're using one of the picture profiles I'll introduce uh, shortly. Then we'll go into the yellow setup menu and we're going to come to operation customize which is on page 3. And now this is a great place to choose different settings for stills and movies. So that means when we've uh, set up the camera for shooting movies and then we start shooting stills, when we return to movies a lot of our movie settings will be retained. Things like aperture, shutter speed, ISO, just check the boxes where you want those settings to be retained for your movie movie shooting mode. I would select these three and I'd also select white balance, picture profile and focus mode. Just uncheck any box that you're not wanting to retain for shooting movies. We'll then select OK for those six settings to be preserved for when we're shooting movies. Um, now one of those settings was the focus mode and we will mostly shoot in continuous autofocus because we've got a, a great degree of control using the touch operation which I'll, I'll talk more about later. Now there was a forgotten setting in those um, different settings for shooting movies and stills and that is focus area. And if you're going to choose um, a one focus area for shooting movies I strongly recommend choosing the wide focus focus area. That is not going to limit us later because we will still be able to touch focus on a particular point on the screen or do some touch tracking and again I'll talk about that later. Um, okay, focus area uh, wide, that's where you're going to pick that up if you don't have it assigned to uh, uh, maybe a, a custom button. I have it assigned to the C2 button on the top of the camera, but if you haven't assigned that to focus area, you'll find it on the AFMF um, tab on page 2. Okay, so let's go um, to the um, yellow setup menu again power setting option that's on page 8. Now most people will want to switch the auto power off temperature to high and that makes sure that the, um, the camera can get quite um, uh, warm before it decides to give you the warning screen to say this camera is starting to get a little bit hot and shortly it will have to shut down to cool the sensor. We then go to the yellow setup menu, uh, page one, area date. Now you might wonder why we're coming in here, but um, we need to access that NTSC or PAL selector. It should be set up for your region, so you probably won't need to adjust this. But if you start traveling overseas with your camera, you might want to switch that if you say you're going from uh, North America in NTSC and then you're going over to Europe, you'll possibly want to switch to the PAL and that's uh, because of the frame rates uh, required to shoot without uh, uh, flickering when we're working in artificial light sources. If you do make that change uh, you will get this warning um, uh, because the camera does need to reboot um, to go from PAL to NTSC or vice versa. Okay, finally we're coming into that shooting menu. Now you'll see we have the movie icon there because I have turned the subdial to the uh, movie shooting. And we're coming into image quality on page one. We'll come to file format. Now most people will choose um, to go from the XAVCS HD over to the 4K option. There is an option higher than that, but that does create significantly larger movie files. So most people will select the second line item for shooting 4K uh, videos. 
We'll then come down one line and go to movie settings. And if you want, um, um, here we can set the frames per second. Now, a lot of people want to choose the faster frame rates, but just uh, um, be aware that uh, Hollywood shoots uh, uh, primarily at 24 frames per second. So yes, shoot at the higher frame rate if you may be doing fast action uh, work, but um, for most work, you can actually work with this lower frame rate. That'll be 25p in the PAL region and 30 p in the NTSC region. Well, there's the 30p. You see you've got that 60p above and 24p below. Now, people in the PAL region won't have the option for that 24p unless they reboot into the NTSC region mode. Now, um, if you're wanting the maximum quality video, you will always choose the 10-bit option. And uh, the larger the M number, that's 140M there, the better the quality as well. So it's usually the top line item if we're looking for maximum quality. Now, if you do choose to go for that higher frame rate, um, that's 50 frames per second in the PAL region, 60 frames per second in the NTSC region, um, then we're going to be looking at that 200M422 10-bit for the maximum quality. Now, just be aware that if you do um, decide to move to that higher frame rate, you'll see this icon appear uh, on the monitor and also in the Finder window. It's basically telling you that you've now switched to APS-C Super 35 shooting mode. Now the lens will um, have a narrower angle of view so effectively you're zooming a little bit more when you're shooting in this higher frame rate. You're not using the full width of the sensor anymore, you're using a smaller section of that sensor. Just be aware of that. So if you're wanting to go full frame and you're looking to prioritize maybe shallow depth of field when you're shooting with a wide prime lens, just stay at those lower frame rates, either the 25 or 30 frames per second. Once we've set up the uh, the, the um, video recording, we'll probably want to go over to the S and Q. That stands for slow and quick. This is where we can set up the camera to shoot slow motion uh, footage. So we'll go into the S and Q settings. And again, we'll set the top um, line item to the same uh, frames per second we've been shooting the regular speed movies. That would probably be 30p there. And then we can choose the S and Q frame rate, which will um, typically be higher than the uh, record frame rate, and that gives you that two times slow motion. Now we can get actually um, a higher frame rate than this. We will need to lower um, the uh, file size if we're going to get a higher frames per second. So if we if we want that um, 100 or 120 frames per second for four times slow motion, we'll have to decide to record in HD rather than 4K. So go back to file format, a drop from uh, 4K to HD. We can then access that 120 frames per second or 100 frames per second in the PAL region. OK, so you see the record frame rate is set at the 60p. So that's still giving us two times slow motion. We actually have to drop the record frame rate to 30p and the S and Q frame rate to 120 FPS to get that four times slow motion. OK, let's go back to the movie icon on that sub dial below the shoot mode dial on the top of the camera. And now we'll move to the shooting menu. Uh, we're on page one. We're going lens compensation and we can turn on the breathing compensation. This is a feature that first appeared on the Alpha 74 camera. In this demonstration, you're going to see me shifting focus with the breathing compensation in the off position first. And you'll see the size of these little Russian dolls change as I change the focus. OK, getting smaller and getting larger. So what we'll do now is we'll go uh, into the menus and switching that breathing compensation to on. So again, lens compensation, 
breathing compensation and switch that to the on position. Now we'll change focus again and you'll see the size of these dolls stays relatively the same. Okay, so it this uh, breathing compensation works with only a, a certain select group of lenses. So here are the lenses. Uh, the G masses are pretty much well covered, but you can also see some G lenses such as that 20mm f1.8 G and the 12-24 f4 G. So this is a great feature if you don't want that breathing and you have some of these compatible lenses. Okay, so let's go uh, to the yellow setup menu, page 3, FN menu settings. These are the settings that we can quickly access when we press the FN button on the back of the camera. So this is where we go in to um, uh, change those settings. Now the um, we've got the top 12 just for stills and we've got the bottom 12 which can be a different 12 for when we're shooting movies. Now I'll have modified some of these and I'll go through some of them um, such as the uh, the audio here so this um, uh, I don't need to go into the main menus to change my audio recording level I can just simply press the FN button and navigate to the recording level and then make that adjustment and um, generally the default setting is set uh, a little bit too high if we're using um, uh, an on-camera microphone mounted on the uh, on the multi interface shoe so that will generally have to be lowered significantly from the default setting Talking about that um, uh, digital microphone that goes on the digital multi-interface shoe, that ECM B1M uh, is a shotgun microphone that is specifically a digital microphone. So that uh, gives you a clean audio signal um, when uh, using the Alpha 7.4. It's also um, applicable to the A7R4 and the Alpha 1 cameras and the A7S3 camera as well. Probably all late model cameras will support these digital microphones. So as well as having that um, digital shotgun microphone, Sony updated their digital wireless microphones. That's where you can have a lapel microphone and that's also a digital signal as well. One of the other things that you'll find in those um, FN menus is the steady shot settings. So this is where I can come and switch steady shot off if the camera's on a tripod or switch it on. There is also uh, a steady shot settings if we're going to attempt to walk with the camera we can choose the active steady shot setting. This is going to give you the smoothest footage or the less, uh, least shaky footage when we're actually walking with the camera while recording. Now again you'll narrow the angle of view of the lens uh, slightly when we're doing this so just be prepared to put on a slightly wider angle zoom or wider angle prime if you're going to start using active steady shot. One of the other things that we'll probably want to uh, access very quickly also from the FN menu is that auto white balance. Most of the time we don't want the auto white balance changing just because somebody with a bright red coat stepped in front of the lens. We will probably want to work with a custom uh, preset um, or uh, just one of the um, fixed um, presets there such as daylight if we're working outdoors. So um, picture profiles can also be accessed from this FN menu and the, um, the latest and greatest picture profile which a lot of people seem to like is that PP11 which is that S Cinetone profile. So that is uh, again something that you'll probably want to uh, switch on when record recording movies. And remember um, going back to the different settings for stills and movies if we switch this um, on for uh, when we're recording movies and uh, off when we're recording stills, we won't have to remember to switch the picture profile on and off ever again. We also have this uh, feature called Focus Map. It's sort of an update to the uh, the peaking. So some people will prefer now to use this Focus Map instead of the traditional Focus Peaking. So um, I, I'm going to work uh, this in this demo movie um, with uh, Lens Assist, and I'll talk about that shortly. 
OK, so what we're seeing here is everything that is blue is behind the depth of field and everything that is orange is in front of the depth of field. And every time we see anything that's clear, that is the point of focus. So it's a little bit more sophisticated than focus peaking because we know what is um, out of focus behind and what is out of focus in front. So it's probably just a little bit more sophisticated. You'll see a lot is blue and red here because I'm working with a very wide aperture close to the subject matter. OK, so let's um, go to the AFMF uh, menu now. Uh, this is for, again, for shooting movies. So we're on the first page and uh, there is the AF Assist. Now, if I just go back one slide, you'll see that there's a Focus Assistant and I'm not too sure why they decide to put the AF Assist in the AFMF menu instead of the Focus Assistant menu. But there we go, that's where Sony's choice. So it, it could lead you to hunt for this if, you, if you've gone to the Focus Assistant menu by in error. So with the AF Assist on, what that does is it allows me to to uh, um, uh, uh, move the focus ring in auto focus to fine tune the focus. We can also do this with uh, focus magnifier activated as well and that can be accessed uh, by um, pressing the center button. Well that's the way I've set up my Alpha 7.4 in the custom key settings anyway. So this will allow me then just whenever I want to magnify the view while I'm filming and then pull focus with um, focus assist on I can just uh, press that center button and that will go into 4 times magnification which will allow me to fine-tune that focus. Some of the other features that you might want to access from that FN menu is the uh, Zebra display. Now I would uh, definitely recommend switching that on because this is going to help you uh, protect from overexposing the highlights. Now I use the Zebras also for stills that set to 109 plus lower limit for shooting raw files but you're going to want to lower that significantly for shooting video. Either 100 plus to show you what is overexposed or maybe lowering it down to somewhere between 75, 80 if you just want confirmation that your highlights with the zebras on are exactly correctly exposed rather than overexposed. So that is where you would lower the zebra level. So people wearing white um, clothing, you'd expect to see the zebras there and that would be confirmation that your exposure is about right. Again, yellow set uh, menu, we're on the uh, uh, page three, custom key dial settings. So I'll just show you some of the uh, settings that I've um, assigned to some of my custom keys, like the AL button is assigned to zoom. Um, and uh, so that is uh, uh, very useful to quickly zoom a lens and you don't have to have a zoom lens on the camera to zoom when shooting video. You can zoom with a prime lens. So what you would need to do is uh, select clear image zoom uh, when you're wanting to zoom when using a prime lens and there is that option. So once you've um, set uh, clear image zoom to on then you can decide on the speed of the zoom. Now you're basically given two choices of the zoom speed. In standby mode you can zoom very quickly to move your focus point but when recording you can choose a very slow zoom because you don't want uh, people falling out of their seats by zooming too quickly. So there you've got a choice in standby mode and record mode for a difference. And then all I need to do when I want to zoom is press the AEL button and then use the uh, rear control wheel, uh, press the left side or right side to gradually zoom in, especially if I've set the uh, zoom speed too slow. One of the other things I've set on the custom keys is my monitor brightness. So as soon as I step into a bright ambient conditions, I can press the left side of the um, control wheel. In stills mode, that would be the drive mode, but there is a redundant setting for shooting movies. So I've reassigned it to monitor brightness. And then I can go into plus one, plus two, or sunny weather setting for when the, um, when the ambient lighting conditions are very bright. Um, the down button, which is um, usually unassigned, I've assigned to audio record level um, so that I can get quick access even without having to go into the FN menu. 
and of course uh, focus area I've set that to the same as I've set my stills to which is the, uh, the, the, the C2 key on the top of the camera there okay so other options that we've got for shooting movies is a grid line display which you can use to make sure you're keeping everything straight and uh, well composed um, we've also got this emphasize record display this is especially useful if you turn the monitor back um, facing towards you and you're in front of the camera and you definitely want to know that you're actually recording and you don't want to be looking for the little red light you want to basically see a big red box around your frame that you're recording and so this is very obvious that you're now in record mode we also have options for marker displays there which some people will choose to use now um, I'm coming over now because what we're looking at as we're recording is um, the shutter speed that you'll probably want to be recording when shooting uh, videos. Now you don't want that to be too fast. So if you've got a um, uh, if you've got a wide aperture and your shutter speed is too fast, you really want to step in here and put some neutral density filters or a variable ND filter so we can reduce the amount of light so we can slow that shutter speed down. So this would be appropriate if we're using um, uh, 50p or 60 frames per second you would want 1 one hundredth or 1 one two fifth of a second as your shutter speed there focus mode we're got, we've um, talked about that previously but that is going to be in continuous auto focus you'll only get two choices in the movie mode and that is uh, continuous or manual focus and there are the two choices and you might have assigned a custom key to that um, such as the C3 key for instance you may have assigned and so uh, aut um, continuous auto focus and again you'll choose the AF um, transition speed um, that you want linked when uh, re recording and shifting focus and usually you want to slow that down AF subject shift sens sensitivity here it is set for responsive but if you want it as sticky as possible when you're tracking something you're going to want to lower that significantly as well perhaps all the way down to number one locked on if you want the stickiest tracking uh, possible with the focus mode set to continuous autofocus, that's AFC, and the focus area set to wide, our focus workflow when shooting with movies will be as follows. We'll switch touch operation to on. In the display view where we can either see the level or the histogram, we'll then be able to cycle through our three options. And these are touch focus, that's where we pull focus between one subject matter at one distance to a different subject matter at a different distance. This will override the continuous autofocus and basically lock the focus at that specific distance. And then we can cancel for um, continuous autofocus to resume. Then the, uh, if we tap on that icon, we can cycle through to touch tracking. This is where we touch a subject and then the subject or we can move and then the camera will faithfully track that subject across the the frame and then of course the third option is to cancel the focus so that is the focus uh, workflow in a nutshell and uh, that concludes all of the settings required to shoot movies now if you're looking for a little bit more support than I've offered here then just remember you can head over to patreon.com if you found this information useful, head over to patreon.com forward slash Mark Gaylor. I'm offering an alpha creative skills support channel where you can download a 500 page camera specific ebook and I've covered most of the late model alpha cameras. You'll also be able to download a cam set file if you own one of the later model alphas. You'll be able to set up your entire camera with just a single file copied to a memory card. I also offer additional uh, ebooks for people to download to help them master the uh, skills of creative photography and also a range of uh, one hour seminars that look at the uh, using the, uh, the camera gear to the best effect and also to build up your skills of photography in general. So head over to patreon.com forward slash Mark Gaylor.